granted that the metabolic stress uh, dimension of hypertrophy is somewhat up in the air, what are or how do you advise people to tweak their training to maximize uh, this impact on hypertrophy? Well, so I, I don't really, I don't really look at it in that context. So to me, I, I think it's almost somewhat backwards that to me we look at what the research shows on different variables and we use the variables to then make our recommendations. Um, I, I do think to some extent, uh, particularly like I said, with more advanced. Uh, individuals, when you're looking to maximize the response, either athletes, bo particularly bodybuilders, uh, or just someone who wants to look great on the beach and you know get every last uh, morsel of muscle that they can from their genetics, uh, that's when you could say, well, eccentric training can create more muscle damage, and if that can be managed properly, then we should add in some eccentric. But we also can look to the research on eccentric training and see what it has. So we're kind of, whether you're putting the chicken before the egg or vice versa, um, I, I think a lot of it is just driven through the uh, research that we have on the variables themselves. We can then piece together what the mechanistic roles are in some okay. of these things. Sure, I see. It, how necessary that is, I'm not sure. Well, then let me ask my question a bit differently. So I have in mind rest interval length between sets. How do you use that in your programming or advise people to use it in theirs? Yeah. So again, I think this is an interesting um, topic. So um, my my former view was that um, shorter rest intervals, and this had always been taught like in the NSCA textbooks, shorter rest intervals were a better driver of hypertrophy. Whereas for strength, you would rest for longer periods. For hypertrophy, like a one minute or so rest was ideal. Mm -hmm. And there were several theories, but primarily because of a post-exercise hormonal spike that can be achieved well. It had subsequently been shown that the um, post-exercise hormonal spikes, which last an hour or two after exercise, really don't seem to show much influence on hypertrophic uh, adaptations. Um, and research that we've carried out and, and some others have shown that somewhat longer rest intervals actually seem to be more beneficial for hypertrophy. So if we were just to look from a mechanistic standpoint, we can make a rationale that you're getting greater metabolic stress. But you have to realize too, though, is that when you're training with shorter rest intervals, and this again is theoretical, but you're, uh, the subsequent sets that you do, you're going to have to either reduce the amount of load to maintain your rep range, or you're not going to be able to do as many reps. So either way, you're compromising the time under tension. Um, and thus, so the volume load comes into play. Uh, it's been shown that there's a blunting of hypertrophy when you're doing multiple sets and you're taking short rest intervals. So I, I will say a couple of things with that, though. There are always some caveats. It seems to have greater negative impacts when you're doing multi-joint exercises because um, multi-joint exercises see a sharper decline in the number of reps that you can do in subsequent sets with short rest intervals. So hypothetically, you can still use fairly short rest intervals with your single joint movements. Um, and particularly your multi-joint free weight movements need somewhat longer rest intervals, two to three minutes. Uh, and again, how strong is the evidence? I'd say it's moderate. Uh, I, I'm still not completely sold, and I still think there's room to understand more in terms of how we can optimize that response from a rest interval standpoint. Hmm. Sure. And then another variable that I'm curious about and how the research informs your thinking on it is uh, training frequency. Yeah, uh, interesting topic as well. Um, the bulk of the research does not seem to show much difference between training a muscle once, twice, or three times or more per week. Really? On a weekly basis. Hmm. But that is on a volume equated basis with re relatively modest volumes. Okay. And it seems that um, there's some evidence, and again, we don't have 
just hasn't been a lot of studies that have looked at this, but the evidence that we have does seem to suggest that when you start getting above eight to 10 sets in a given session for a muscle group, perhaps a little more, uh, it's probably best to split up the volume over more frequent days that you might not derive the most uh, beneficial effects from that volume if uh, if you're doing it all in one session versus spreading it out over two or more sessions.